Hello, hello. This is Stephanie from Apex Languages with another Words of the Week. This Sunday will be Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all my mama bears out there. To the guys, get to work and get us something nice. Just kidding. Or am I? So, what word have I chosen to commemorate such a lovely holiday? Bear. First, as always, let's practice pronunciation. Bear, bear, bear. Now, a lot of students tend to struggle with pronouncing these three words in particular, bear, beer, and beard. I think it's because, first of all, it can be hard to know what to do with the vowel sequence E-A in any word. Most of the time, uh, it sounds like a, a long E. And then, Beard looks like it should be pronounced like bear, but instead it keeps the long E sound and also don't forget the, the D at the end. Confusing or not though, people will give you odd looks if you order a bear at the bar or start talking about how hairy your beer is. So let's practice. Bear, beer, beard. Bear, beer, beard. Now that we've got that out of the way, did you know that bear is not only a noun? It's, it's more than just that big hairy animal uh, that lives in the woods. It can also be used and is used quite frequently as a verb. Uh, both forms come from Old English. Our verb comes from baron to give birth. And that's why we're talking about it for Mother's Day. Bear is the verb in I was born. I did mention this uh, briefly last week, but let me really dive into details here. People get confused all the time. I was born and then they just say I born. You can't do that. I was born is a passive idea in English. Okay, the verb is bear and born is the past participle. So what you're actually saying is, I was born by my mother. My mother gave birth and so bearing is the act of giving birth. When you were born, you didn't do any of the work. Remember that, <laughs> your mom pushed you out, okay? And so this is why it's a passive idea. I was born. I was a baby, I didn't do anything, I just went with the flow. My mother bore me. Um, and so you could have sentences like, uh, it's like she bears a new baby every year. You don't really hear this a lot in the uh, present tense uh, where people are involved, uh, but you know, she's got it. She has a new baby every year. She bears a new baby every year. My past tense is she bore a beautiful baby boy. That one's a little bit, you, you might hear it. She bore, okay, she gave birth to. So here you can see the present tense, bear, the past tense, bore, and my past participle, which is what you use in the passive, born or born, uh, we have a whole other group of definitions and you're gonna use the one with the E. Uh, I, uh, I, I have born many troubles. Uh, those are more common with the E spelling, but the giving birth sense, as you should know by now is B-O-R-N, no E, okay? And then just finally one more uh, sentence here. The tree is still too young to bear any fruit. So bear itself, um, not passive, is most likely to be used when you're talking about uh, trees, you know, fruit, plants, flowers, uh, possibly animals, okay? So you, you will hear it. Most likely, you would hear it in a sentence like this. So the tree is too young to bear any fruit, to you know, have the flowers create, give birth to fruit. Moving on, 
If you were paying attention, you notice that I alluded to more definitions. That's the thing with really old words. They start off with one meaning, but they get a lot of baggage. It's if you, you go on a, a vacation to another country, the longer you stay in that country, the more souvenirs you're going to buy right <laughs> and so a word as old as bear which actually has indo-european roots so it's it's uh, a word that you find in a lot of languages from england all the way to india okay um it's got a long history now the other definition so you have this idea of giving birth okay making a baby or, or at least uh bring the baby to life the other main definition is to support or carry, which is related, right? Um, at least during pregnancy, the mother carries the baby, okay? The giving birth part, well, you have to support a lot of discomfort, I suppose, okay? Um, but this is really a central meaning of bear. There's variations and, and there's, you know, special sayings too that get their own little meanings. You've got a, a quite a long list of definitions if you look at bear in the dictionary. But if I just wanted to condense it down and, and give you a, a, a general rule that you can use whenever you hear it in different situations, okay, the number one meaning is to carry. And if you want two meanings to give birth and to carry, okay? So, bear. I've got a bunch of sentences here. So, the table, unable to bear their weight, broke. Okay? It was unable to support their weight. It could not carry them. Guest began arriving, bearing food and gifts. Okay? We're, we're bearing gifts. We like these people. They're carrying, they're bringing. So, you know, bear can mean to bring, okay? Uh, but really, it, it's related to your carrying uh, foods and you're presenting it to the host. After he broke his leg, they bore him off the field in a stretcher. So here, they're carrying him. He got hurt, and so they have to carry him, literally, off the field to somewhere safe. She had borne the blame since it was her gun. Okay, see the born, because uh, I'm using the past participle here. Uh, so if you bear the blame, that means you have to carry the blame, the guilt. Blame is guilt. Okay, it was her gun, and so everyone's accusing her of the murder or whatever's happening in this sentence. So she's carrying that guilt. So again, we have samples of, of like physical carrying something that's real and physical, but a lot of times uh, it goes into the metaphorical range, okay? So some blame, you can't hold it, it doesn't have any weight, but it you carry it on your shoulders. That's sort of the image we have. It, it feels heavy, even if it is not actually heavy. The tombstone bore a simple inscription, beloved. So here we're saying that there is an inscription, something written on the tombstone, the grave, gravestone, okay? And so it was written there and it's being supported, it's being carried by the, the, the marble gravestone, okay? She bears a strong resemblance to her mother. So when a mother and daughter look the same, father and son or or grandfather and grandson we say that they ha they bear a resemblance okay so they're supporting they're, there's there's evidence to believe they may be related because they look alike so you're supporting a resemblance when you get to the fork in the road bear left this one's a little bit more of a stretch okay but if you bear left that means to turn Okay, it might not be a hard turn. Bearing left is, well, you know, we're talking about a fork. It's sort of like a Y shape. And so uh, you just go a little bit to the left. Okay, that's bearing left. Like prefer the left, carry yourself to the left. Now, bear in mind, I don't know, I, I didn't know that when I applied. 
This is a good saying, bear in mind. That means remember, carry in your mind. Think about this uh, uh, as everything else happens, okay? So carry this in your mind. And finally, I can't bear to be in the same room as him. I can't stand it, okay? I hate it. So, you know, I can't, I can't support. I just can't, uh, kind of like the table that breaks because there's too much weight. If I have to stay in this room with this person, I'm going to break. <laughs> I'm going to go crazy. So that's uh, another fun uh, saying. I can't bear something. I can't bear bananas. I hate bananas. Eh, anything like that. So that's bear. Bear in mind, there are a couple of homonyms that I would like to address. Homonyms are words that sound the same. Uh, here we have bore, which is also a verb, so that's similar to the past tense. Well, bore is where we get the word boring from. To, uh, to bore is to wear down with dullness to make bored. So that boring movie left me so bored, it almost bored me to death. Uh, the last one, the third example, is the verb in action. Uh, the boring is a present participle, and bored is a past participle. They all come from the, the verb. Okay, so you've heard of bored and boring. Well, they, there's a verb, and that's bore. Uh, bore, less commonly, can also be found um, uh, to make a hole. Okay, it takes a special, it takes special machines to bore holes in solid steel. So that's when the machine is, is making holes. Okay, and as a noun, uh, there are tidal bores, a sudden tidal wave at a river's mouth. Uh, tidal bores can cause unexpected flooding. Less common, bore though, you know, we, we see that all the time. Uh, that word actually has mysterious meaning, so we're not sure where it came from. Um, but I'll probably bore you if I keep talking about that. The other word I want to talk to you about is bear. Sounds the same is spelled differently, and so that in itself can cause confusion. Bear can be a verb and an adjective. I'm going to address the adjective meanings first. Without the expected coverings, naked. So bears are bare because they don't wear any clothes. Uh, they're even more bare if they lose their hair. Oh, this is fun. I like this game. <laughs> Lots of rhyming. Um, she prefers running around barefoot to wearing shoes. You might have heard of barefoot. That means that your foot is naked. Not able to bear the plain bare walls, he painted them bright red. Okay, so it's not always naked, as fun as that is. Things that are bare... Uh, you know, when you move into a new house, it's bare. There's no couch, there's no TV, there's no paintings on the wall. They're plain and they're bare, okay? So very useful adjective, just to mean that something seems naked. Still, adjective, uh, it, it has developed some slightly more metaphorical meanings, okay? Not hidden, or not decorated. So his bare hatred of us made me hate him right back. He's not trying to hide his hatred. It's bare, it's clear and open to see. So that's the not hidden, not hidden one. And then we have, these are the bare facts. There's nothing you can do about it. So bare is you're not adding things on. It's just simple. It's the, again, that apartment with no furniture. The simple, unadorned facts of life. I'm not adding things to make it less clear. This is just what it is. Um, my last sentence comes from the Disney movie, The Jungle Book. Uh, it's a couple decades old by now, but they have a big song uh, called The Bare Necessities. And that's fun because it's a play on words between bear, rawr, because a bear is singing the song, and it's just the essential necessities of life. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. All right, so bare necessities are just the essential, what you need. You don't need to worry, you don't need to have troubles, you just need the basics. As for the verb, that is to expose, to uncover, to show clearly. Okay, so to 
make naked. He bared his chest to reveal the scar. He took off his shirt. Okay. Or again, metaphorically, she bared her soul, revealing all her biggest secrets. So you, you open up and you talk about things so that things aren't hidden anymore. One more uh, related word is barely, which is a really great word. Uh, it's an adverb. And at one point it did mean, uh, you know, clearly, basically not hidden. But really, the meaning has changed a little bit, so let me just address that. Uh, barely means only just, by just a little bit, almost not, okay? As in, I barely made it to work on time, walking in with just one minute to spare. I was on time, but barely. One minute more, I would have been late. So just a little bit, that's barely. She walks around with barely any clothes on. Just a shirt to keep her from being completely bare. Right? She does have clothes on, but not much. She is almost completely bare. <laughs> what is your writing assignment this week? Write a sentence or paragraph using as many of these words and their different meanings as possible. I gave you a lot. Challenge yourself. Try to fit as many into one sentence as you can. Or if you want, then you know, write me a paragraph. So whatever works best for you, but write me something, all right? Thank you, as always, for watching. Check out more videos at apexlanguages.com and have a happy, healthy, safe rest of your day.